Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In part 9 today, I have got 15 very latest and important questions for you in our AZ104 real exam question and answer series. 85 questions have already been covered spanning across 8 parts. And trust me, you don't want to miss any of those questions. The answers to all of the questions are very well explained and well documented with Microsoft documentation. If for any reason you have missed to watch any of these parts, then the links for all these parts are now appearing in the i button on the top right corner and are also available in the description box below. If you want a PDF version of all the questions with answers of this part 9, then you have to give me the correct answer for question number 90 and question number 100. You will find the answers to both these questions in this video itself. A PDF file can really boost your learning in the offline mode as well. So please watch video very carefully till the very end. You can now connect the Facebook community of Tech Blackboard on www.facebook.com slash the Tech Blackboard. Now let's kick start our part 9 with question number 86 and question says that you have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso and an Azure Kubernetes service cluster named AKS1. An administrator reports that she is unable to grant access to AKS to the user in Contoso.com. You need to ensure that the access to AKS1 can be granted to Contoso.com users. What should you do first? So your options are from Contoso.com modify the organization relationship settings or the second option is from Contoso.com create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint. The third option is recreate AKS1 or the last one is from AKS1 create a namespace. And the correct answer for this question is option B which is from Contoso.com create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint. Now let's go to the Microsoft documentation and verify our answers. So this is the Microsoft documentation that talks more about access and identity options for Azure Kubernetes service. If you will scroll a little almost towards the midway and then you will reach to a section here which is titled by Azure AD integration. And in this section, if you will read through, it says that Azure AD authentication is provided to AKS cluster with OpenID Connect. OpenID Connect is an identity layer built on top of OAuth 2.0 protocol. So that quick read from Microsoft documentation was the base for choosing option B as an answer to this question. Coming to question number 87 and it says that your organization needs a way to create application aware snapshots and backup Linux virtual machines and VMware virtual machines. You have files, folders, volumes and workloads to protect. You recommend which of the following solution. Select one of the options and your options are Azure Backup Agent, Azure Backup Server, Enable Disk Snapshot or Enable Backup for Individual Azure VMs. And the correct answer for this question is option B Azure Backup Server. Up next our question number 88 says that your company has a series of virtual machines created as a part of their Azure subscription. They want to ensure that IT administrative team is notified if any virtual machine go into the deallocated state. Which of the following could you perform to fulfill this requirement and your options are create an Azure policy using a inbuilt definition from the compute category. Or the other option is assign a resource tag for the virtual machine and then create an alert based on that resource tag. The third option is enable diagnostics log for the virtual machine. Or the fourth one is create an alert based on the activity log for the virtual machine. And the correct answer for this question is option number D which is create an alert based on activity log for the virtual machine. And the reason is that activity log records all the control place activities. It includes recording the event when the virtual machine goes into deallocated state. So you can create that alert based on the activity log. Before moving ahead, I just wanted to say that friends, it takes considerable amount of time and effort to find Microsoft documentation to justify each answer and give you an explanation for each question in our exam series. Please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to the channel. 
your each like encourage me and ensures that the video is reaching to a greater audience do share the videos with everyone having interest in learning azure cloud technologies your comments and feedbacks give me a chance to understand what you want to see on this channel and help me improve my content i always make sure to read each of your comment and reply to them so keep supporting me and i promise to bring the content that helps you grow in your career reaching out to question number 89 and that says that you have an azure subscription named subscription 1 containing following resources and here in this table you can see that we have number of resources for example we have rg1 which is a resource group we have rg2 which again is a resource group and then we have virtual network 1 and 2 Moving on the question says that vnet1 is in rg1 vnet2 is in rg2 there is no connectivity between vnet1 and vnet2 an administrator named admin1 creates an azure virtual machine named vm1 in rg1 now vm1 uses a disk named disk1 and connects to vnet1 further on it says that the admin1 then install a custom application in virtual machine1 Then the question says that you need to move the custom application to vnet2 or virtual network2. The solution must minimize administrative effort which two actions should you perform? So what will be your first step to do it and what will be your second step? And here are some of the options listed for both of the steps. Now it's quite a wholesome question. A lot of information is given in this question which can make you really confused. So let me dissect the question first so that we can understand it better and then we will be in a better position to answer the question. So let's move on. So the main task is to move this custom application. You can see that the admin one has installed a custom application and this custom application needs to be moved to a another network which is called vnet2. Also you need to understand where exactly is this custom application right now so right now it resides on vm1 or virtual machine 1 and the vm1 is residing on vnet1 which is a virtual network so essentially you want to move this custom application from virtual machine 1 residing on vnet1 to the vnet2 now the problem is that you cannot move virtual machines from one virtual network to another so what to do well the best and the easiest option is to move the disk attached to the virtual machine so please understand whenever we are talking about the custom application where is this custom application actually installed it's installed on virtual machine no i mean in one sense it is installed on virtual machine but under the hood it's actually residing on the disk so the disk that is attached to virtual machine this custom application is residing on that particular disk now the best option is rather than we fiddling around with the virtual machine we will take this disk to another virtual machine on another virtual network and the best option to move the disk is that we will detach the disk from the first virtual machine or virtual machine 1 and then we will just move this disk to the other virtual machine and once we have detached the disk from virtual machine 1 we will delete virtual machine 1 So the very first step that we will do is delete the virtual machine one. And once you have deleted the virtual machine one, then the next step would be that you create a new virtual machine and attach the disk to the new virtual machine in another virtual network. As this was a little confusing question, I will summarize it once again. So you have a custom application on virtual machine which is residing on one virtual network called vnet one. you want to move this custom application to another virtual machine in another network the best way to do is that you detach the data disk from the virtual machine 1 residing on virtual network 1 and move this data disk to another virtual machine in another virtual network hope you understand if you still have some confusion around this question do let me know in the comment section moving ahead with question number 90 and that says that you have an azure subscription named subscription 1 that contains an azure log analytics workspace named as workspace 1 you need to view the error events from the table named event which query should you run in the workspace 1 and there are four options given for this question all are listed here however the correct answer for this question is the option b 
Now friends, there are many more ways in which Microsoft can tweak these commands little bit here or little bit there. However, you know the correct answer is this one which I've highlighted in the green arrow. Moving towards our question number 91 and the question says that you have an Azure Directory tenant named Tenant1 and an Azure subscription named Subscription1. Tenant1 contains a group named Developers and the Subscription1 contain a resource group named Dev. Now you need to provide Developers group with the ability to create Azure Logic app in Dev resource group. And the solution given here is that on the Dev, you assign the Logic app contributor role to the developers group. Does this meet the goal? Now there are two more variations of the same question presented in question number 92 and question number 93. However, due to the space scarcity on one slide, I will take question number 93 in the next slide. For now, let me show you question number 92. So the question is exactly the same. However, the solution is that on dev, you assign contributor role to the developers group. Does this meet the goal? Now, as I understand both these roles, the logic app contributor and the contributor role, both of these roles can fulfill this demand. And the reason behind why these two roles, logic app contributor or the contributor role can fulfill this demand that I will explain in the very next slide where I will explain each of this role in detail. However, for now, the answer for the question number 91 is yes. And answer for the question number 92 is also yes. Now let's jump to the next slide and in question number 93 where I will present you one more variation and also explain each role in detail. Now coming to question number 93 which is again a variation of question number 91 and 92. This one question being exactly the same. However, the solution is little different and this one says that on subscription 1 you assign dev test lab user role to the developer group. Does this meet the goal? An answer for this question is no, it doesn't meet the goal. Now let's understand each role in detail so that you can take a wise decision whenever this kind of question appears to you in the exam. So here are all the roles that we encountered during these questions. The first one is logic app contributor. Now this role lets you manage logic app, but you cannot change access to them. And as presented in these questions, we just want an ability to create logic app in the dev resource group. So of course, logic app contributor role fulfills that demand. Moving on, I have presented one more role that can also appear in Microsoft questions. However, it was not listed in these variation, but of course you can expect it to come. So this role, which is logic app operator, lets you read, enable or disable logic app, but that does not let you edit or update them. So keep that role also in mind because that may also come in the examination. Moving on the contributor role that we saw in question number 92 and this contributor role, it's a very wide role and it lets you do more or less all the things in Azure. But let's also read the definition. So the contributor role grants full access to manage all resources, but it does not allow you to assign roles in Azure RBAC, manage assignments in Azure Blueprints or share image galleries. So this is a contributor role for you. So hopefully this one line definitions will help you understand these rules better. I will encourage you to go to the Microsoft documentation and understand these rules well so that you are well prepared for AZ-104 examination. Now here is question number 94 and it says that when you are creating an Azure public load balancer, which option allows you to set the load balancer as public? And your option are SKU, subscription, public IP address or type. So which option do you set so that you can declare or define your load balancer as public? And the correct answer for this question is type. So you use type property in the load balancer so that you can define which load balancer you want, whether you want a public load balancer or do you want a private load balancer? Moving on with question number 95 and it says that you have an Azure storage account named storage one that contains a blob container named container one. Now you need to prevent new content added to the container one from being modified for one year. 
what should you configure and your options are the access tier and access policy the access level or the access control iam setting and the correct answer for this question is an access policy and to support our answer this is the microsoft documentation and it talks about store business critical blob data with immutable storage and if you will read the very first property here it says time based retention policy and that one details out that with a time based retention policy user can set policy to store data with a specified interval when a time based retention policy is set objects can be created and read but not modified or delete and that's the exact ask of our question as well i will give the link of this page and all the other documentation that i have referred in this video in the description box so please read them whenever you have some time and now in the next three questions i have got three rapid fire questions on azure kubernetes so here is the question number 96 and it says that aks cluster can be spread across multiple region and the answer for this question is no so you cannot spread aks cluster across region it's a very important point whenever you are working with azure kubernetes cluster Moving quickly on to the next question and that says that AKS cluster can spread across availability zone and the correct answer for this question is yes you can spread AKS cluster across availability zones moving on with question number 98 we have that can you limit who access kubernetes api server so do you have that control of limiting the access on to the kubernetes api server so the correct answer is Yes of course you can limit the access on kubernetes api server these are very quick questions that i thought will be really helpful not only from the exam perspective but also when you really go and work on azure kubernetes because kubernetes is one topic that is on fire in the entire industries you must give a hand on kubernetes containers and all these concepts Now quickly jumping to question number 99 and it says that you download an azure resource manager template based on an existing virtual machine the template will be used to deploy 100 virtual machines and you need to modify the template to reference an administrative password now you want to prevent the password from being stored in a plain text so what should you create to store the password and your options are an azure key vault and an access policy or an azure storage account and an access policy or a recovery service vault and a backup policy or the last one is azure active directory identity protection and an azure policy and of course the correct answer for this question is azure key vault and access policy whenever in the question the ask is around password storage or encryption of password certificates then the very obvious answer that should always strike your mind is azure key vault coming to our question number 100 which will be the last question for our part 9 of our az104 real exam question and answer exam series now let's read the question the question says that what two fundamental type of data does azure monitor collect and your options are email notifications and mobile alerts does it collect username and password or the last option is metrics and logs and the correct answer for this question is of course metrics and logs so that's what azure monitor collects for you i hope you are liking the content and if you are give me a like and subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon so that you get all notifications whenever new videos are uploaded each week If this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and i look forward for them we will meet again in our next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching